Run it up, then run it back. Yeah. Run it up, then run it back. Run it back. Run it up. Woo! It's Thursday, which is our Friday, which makes us happy. What, Lou? Lou's dancing all the way in. These guys, that. hoodie on. You got a solo cup on the, on the table. What? We got some flip it's cup a, it's going a, it's today. It's our Friday, y'all. It's time to chill. It's time we end the week. It is 7 o'clock in the morning. What yeah. else would it be? All right, Stadium Insider, Sham Sharani, and my name's Michelle. That's Chandler Parsons. Lou Will coming to us from Atlanta. And, um, guys... There was basketball last night. Mm -hmm. Can you even believe it? Look at this. Some West Coast fun. Clippers, Kings. Clippers, uh, Clippers beat them. 131, 117. Kawhi Leonard had 34, nine rebounds. James Harden finished with 26 points. De'Aaron Fox, and it's just becoming normal. He had 40. Uh, Ty Lue opened up the postgame presser saying that this, Chandler, is how this thing is supposed to look. That's the blueprint. Do you agree with him? Somewhat. I think the production of the main guys, sure, that's what they're looking for, right? Finally, Kawhi Leonard, he had a great, efficient game, as well as James Harden, as well as Paul George. Now there's some issues with the other four star that mm -hmm. didn't get the productivity, didn't get the minutes that I'm sure he wants. But, yeah, when you look at this team, they finally were efficient. They had a balanced attack. Uh, I think the, I don't think they want them all to play close to 40 minutes a game going forward. But I think getting this win, having a team at Sacramento who's hot, obviously they're coming off a, an emotional win the night before. That was to their advantage. But, yeah, this is, this is they, they, they all played efficient. They all played well together. They all picked their spots. And they, all, and they got a win on the road, which is huge, no matter what happened the night before there or what's been going on with the, with the Clippers. This was a big win, and everybody played well. You know, except Russ, who I'm sure we're going to get to. Well, no, I'm glad you brought that up because Russ only had 19 minutes in this game, uh, and he had nine points and eight assists. Lou, if you're Russ, are, are you happy with this quote-unquote blueprint? <clears throat> yeah, you should be. I mean, remember, this is the guy that got ahead of the bullet. He knew somebody who had to sacrifice uh, minutes, somebody to get out of that, that starting lineup, and he was the guy that stepped up and he said it. And, He's also a guy that's accomplished everything in this league that you can possibly imagine. He's made the money. He's been an MVP. <clears throat> He's made deep playoff runs. The only thing he hadn't had um, is a championship. And he know with this group, they have an opportunity to do that. And somebody needed to come off the bench. So he was the guy that stepped up and said, hey, I'm willing to be that guy to come off the bench and give us that balance. So, you know, nine and eight probably isn't an ideal mm -mm. stat line for him. But it's a 14-point win. He should be happy with it. Yeah, and again, I don't think they should have made the trade if this was going to be an issue. You know what I mean? Like, I get it. The 9-8, and eight I think, is fine with him. 19 minutes, I'm sure he's, uh, you know, a little that perturbed sucks. by. Same with Norman Powell. He didn't get as many minutes as he used to be getting. But... This is this is the reality now. This is the the this is the deal they made. This is the new role that he has. And is he going to play 19 minutes every single game? No way. There's going to be games where he's going to play 40, and he's going to have a hot night. This was a great start, and they got the win. But I don't think I don't think Paul George, Kawhi Leonard, James Harden, they're all going to play 40 something minutes, and Russ is going to play 19. It's it's all going to kind of even out. All right, dynamic. What's going on? How how does it look between Russ and Harden? Yeah. So I, I think. What we've been talking about as soon as they made the trade for James Harden was they were going to have to rip the Band-Aid off. Mm -hmm. And James Harden, you went all in with him. He's making $36 million this year. You gave up two first-round picks. You gave up second-round picks. You gave up a draft swap. You gave up multiple rotation players to get James Harden. You didn't go make that James Harden trade to bring him off the bench and let Russell Westbrook start. They were going to have to choose one of them. And for all intents and, purpose, intents and purposes, the Clippers made this decision to bring Russell Westbrook off the bench. And I think overall it was only going to be a matter of time in a lot of ways because you need the ball in James Harden's hand. This team is playing better. Like yeah. overall when you look at their, their record, you look at the way they play, the way they look, when James Harden's playing point guard, and last night we saw it, I mean, 26 points, six assists, three steals, season high in, in points and, and, and three-point field goals made. Like he showed, and I think Tyloo said after the game, this is who James Harden is as a player. But there's no question, Russell Westbrook, his points have gone, I mean, he's averaging four, he went from 14, seven, and six Jeez. as a starter with 31 minutes a game, to now he's at nine points, five and a half rebounds, and five assists, and his minutes are down by nine per and game. And so, and his field goal percentage are down, he's not getting the ball as much as, as he did before. But this is gonna be all about acceptance, sacrifice, that's all this team can, can hang their hat on if they're gonna get to where they wanna but get. But he, he's the only one that's sacrificing. That doesn't well, seem right here's, either. Here's what's interesting to me, too. As, as a player, too, you hear the word, it's a, or the term, it's a business, right? It's a business. But <laughs> then when, it's, when it doesn't go your way, 
then all of a sudden it's personal and, and you know what I mean? So like, again, this is a business, it's a business, as a brand, as a player, you have that option to leave in free agency, to go get more money, to go get more opportunity. Coaches, you know, they have that same option to trade you, to not play you as many minutes as you think you deserve. So it's, it's, it's gotta be a, there's a balance, right? There's gotta be a fine line, but when it doesn't go your way, you still gotta understand the business aspect of it, that they just traded for James Harden. They just did this deal and this is now, you know, the process going forward. This is what it's going to be like. So, again, I, I think this is going to change. I think he, Russ is still going to have these big games. As soon as James Harden goes out with a, you know, for a game, maybe he slides in the starting lineup. It's all going to change. And this team is deep and they're versatile. But I don't, I look at this like a good win for them. But this isn't the, the you know, the final solution. For them. I will say on Russ Westbrook, he had like a few baskets down the stretch of that Mavericks game over the weekend that I was at. And, and, he basically won them that game. He, they pulled away when he came in, in the fourth, and he had a few baskets. James Harden didn't even need to come back into the game. Right. That's how good Russell Westbrook was. And last night, even though he didn't uh, play as much as he wanted to, I think he had nine points, mm -hmm. uh, eight rebounds or whatever. Yeah, like, he was still producing, I think, to a, uh, a level, e even though he played under 20 minutes last night. And a team this good, sometimes it just takes one win like this to kind of get off the schneid, right, and to kind of get going. They played good. They're ba they were efficient. They had four or five turnovers as a team. This is the recipe for them to win a lot of games. I guess I'm just not, I'm not happy with it right now the way it is, but we'll, we'll see if that changes. Um, I, yeah, you mentioned the, the Kings coming off the emotional win the other night. That's just, I mean, look, that's a, that's a weird back-to-back. Two tough games. That's just all that is. I mean, we don't need to sit here and dissect them. No, do we? I don't think so. Again, listen, they finally beat up their big brother the night before. <laughs> it was an emotional win. It was the the in-season tournament game. The intensity was high. And as a player, honestly, when when you're on a back-to-back, -back, especially against the Clippers and the Warriors, to get one of them is a win. So you kind of have that letdown, especially mm. when you get the first one. And that's what they did. It was just an emotional letdown. They couldn't sustain it. And again, the Clippers, they 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 found something. And they played well. All right, Lou, Fox had 40 points, but only three assists. That's an interesting line at that point. What, do you, what did you make of that? Does he need to do something differently? Yeah, I thought maybe he started that game and, and thought he was just cooking and, and decided to be in, in an offensive bag. You know, this is a guy that's he's averaging seven assists on a season, you know, so the three is not really glaring to me. It might have stood out last night because they had lost their game on a win. I don't think we really talk about getting his teammates involved as much. And, look, this team is built – on him to score. They are built for him to create pace for this group, built for him to have that basketball in his hand and to create place for his teammates and himself. I thought last night was one of those games where he got it going early and he continued to shoot the ball. And so I don't I don't think this is an issue moving forward, but I thought I think this is a one off. Let him cook. Mm -hmm. Love that. Um don't look now, but the Raptors were the ones that <laughs> snapped the win streak. The Suns were on a seven game Streak at that point. Raptors got him 112 105. Pascal Siakam with 22 and 9. Scotty Barnes had 23.7 rebounds. And I say that because he had 12 of those 23 in the fourth quarter. And after the game, he was asked about his performance, said, I've got that dog in me. Chandler, I love that. Uh, how good can this kid be? Didn't Pat Bev say he didn't have the I, dog in somebody's him? Somebody's got the dog, nobody yeah. knows who. Listen, Scotty Barnes is great. I love his <laughs> game from, you know, rookie of the year to look, these numbers are are, are pretty impressive. Yeah. He's averaging 19, 9, and 5. He's one of these versatile players that can turn into that Kawhi Leonard type where he can lock up the other team's best player. He can post up a smaller guy, he can take a bigger guy off the dribble. I've seen him play point. I've seen him play the five position. So he is one of the more versatile players in the league. Uh, he's 22 years old. So the the Maybe. ceiling is is, you know, who knows? He's gonna continue to get better. I think their teams and obviously a little bit of Array, are they going to move some guys? Is Siakam going to be there? One thing's for sure, this guy's going to be there, and he's definitely their, their building block for the future. Yeah, he was the untouchable in any sort of rumors that were about Shams. But the league, when they look at this Raptors, as far as positioning, how, how are they viewed? You, you have to give credit to Masai Ujiri for the roster, at least in terms of talent. Pascal Siakam, OG Ananubi, Yaka Pertl, you have Scotty Barnes. Scotty Barnes, no question, he's the untouchable. That's the guy that is not going to be available in trade, but teams are keeping a close eye as this year goes on on this roster because whether it's Siakam, Ojan Anubi, both guys are entering, these, this is, they're, they're on expiring contracts. So they're gonna be free agents, expected to be free agents this summer. And so on paper, you, we've been waiting for this Raptors team to start gelling. It just hasn't happened this year. They're hovering again around 500. They were around 500 mark last year as well. And then they make the trade for Pirtle when everyone thought yeah. they were gonna start tanking and, and, and trading guys away, but they kept, all their guys, and so I think as we get closer to the trade deadline, I think Masai Ujiri likes to wait until closer to the trade deadline. He'll evaluate his team, 
and we'll see if any of these guys finally do get traded. By the way, they have a lot of, if I'm a contending team, they have a lot of pieces that I want. Like I, like Gary Trent is valuable. He can provide the outside shooting. Uh, Boucher, is that how you say it, Boucher? Bouchard, Boucher? Chris Boucher, yeah. Boucher, like, Boucher. Like, they, they have talented players Bobby that Boucher. can take that next step. And like Toronto's <laughs> kind of in that, that gray area. No, they're not tanking, they got talent. They kind of have pieces for the future, but they're probably not gonna win in advance in the playoffs. So it's, it's a weird situation there. Do they make the playoffs? And, and if, and if uh -oh. they can only just make the play-in or the playoffs, is it worth well, keeping these? Here's games? the thing, the pl is the play in the playoffs? Kind of. Like, because this, if they make the nine or ten life. seed, sure, they win two games and they're in. Anything can happen. They're better than Detroit, Chicago, Washington, and Charlotte for sure. But then you get a little sticky with Atlanta's, and you know, there's other teams. So hmm. I think they can make the top ten with just the talent alone, and they're going to win enough games. But then I don't see them surviving and advancing in the playoffs. Yeah, are we? We should just establish it right now. Is Are we the, counting yeah. the play-in as the playoffs? Is there ten playoff teams? It's technically the playoffs. No, there, it's, it's hard not, to no, not there's, make. There's it's hard to not make teams. the ten. You have to be pretty bad. So then it's like you make the playoffs, or you are a play-in team. That's how we do it. So there's, there's eight playoff teams, there's two play-ins. <laughs> so if you lose, if you're the 10 seed and you lose, you're not a playoff team. No, you're not. Absolutely not. But, then the, but if you but win then two, you are. You are, but yeah. <laughs> Man, I'd hate it. This is weird math. Um, KD was back, though. He had missed the two games with the, uh, the foot injury, Lou. Still averaging about 37 a game. Uh, can, can this continue? This for At a 35? Uh, yeah, I mean, that's 35-year-old Durant. He looks great. I'm not saying he looks like he should take a break, but... How yeah, I mean, he scores, he scores so easy, you know, and I think at this point of his career, he's learned ways to be efficient, learn ways to not burn so much energy trying to score the basketball. If you look at these clips, he's under no pressure. He's under no duress, back doors, lobs, getting to his spots, pull up jumpers. This is a guy that's going to score at a high clip for a very long time. Granted that he's 35, but if anybody can do it, it's going to be these superstar level guys, the Kevin Durant, the LeBron James, the Steph Curry's, the guys that hold the league up. Um, and so can he do it for a long time? I think he levels out at about 30, 31 on average to, uh, when his season is all said and done. But I, I think he can do it. Yeah, can he? Sure. But does he want to? I don't know if he wants to play that many minutes. But he's in a he's in a great situation where his team is so loaded. And once they get Bradley Beal back and Devin Booker continues to play, he doesn't have to. And they're, they're, no matter where they finish, they finish one through six, which even probably four at the worst, if they're fully healthy in the playoffs, I think they're, they, could, they have a potential they could win it all easily with this fully loaded roster. So I don't think there's a reason to, to be playing him 40, 45 minutes a night when, when they're just, their goal should be to be healthy going into the postseason. I feel like it's hard to tell him, though, of, of a lot of guys, like, because he wants to be out there. Yeah, like, it's hard to tell anybody, especially him that's just an yeah. absolute animal on the court. <laughs> yes. Good luck with it's, that. It's crazy that the, how old, like, I guess how old. I mean, these guys are young in, you watch in, in, in basketball terms. But how much him, LeBron, and Steph will continue to play? Yeah. I mean, you hope they stay healthy. And they want, to, like, they love it. It's not like, oh, When is the drop-off coming for those three? Never. Some people just don't. That's just different. We're all Oof. built differently. Some of us can get out of bed in the morning without hurting. Some of us can't, Chandler. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> um, <laughs> Lakers. Remember Lakers lost big time the other night? Well, we're moving past that now because they blew out the Pistons. 133-107. D'Angelo Russell had 35 and 9 assists. Highest scoring game as a Laker. Uh, Anthony Davis with 28 and 16, and Kate Cunningham threw in 15, but um, look, the, blow, <laughs> the blowout Kate was a Kate Cunningham. It's very hard for me to speak today. That was a 44-point loss the other night, and we know what LeBron said afterwards. I don't know if you ever get rid of all of the stink of a game like that, but does this do anything for you? I mean, it's a team that is historically struggling. They're on yeah. pace to be the worst team of all time. Like, they are bad. So does this does this eliminate the loss of the of the 44? No, but it sure does make you feel better. And and now it's what the what do they do next? Do they grow from this? Do they get better? Do they have because the minute they go and throw out another stinker in their next game, then you start having that doubt. Then you got to kind of recircle back to what you did wrong. And you know what I mean. So this was a this was a mature win. They handled their business against a team who is god awful. It's, I'm not impressed, but you know they, this is what they should do. Yeah, I mean it's a it's a tough one. Look, we don't really talk much about D'Angelo Russell unless it's somehow part of a trade talk, Lou, but he had himself a great night. Is he the third guy? Is he capable of being the third guy, or is he just going to be trade talk fodder? I feel like he's always been. You know, now that Austin Reeves has, has gone to the bench, he's established himself as, gonna, as, as he's going to be the third best player on his team or the third best scorer. The only thing I would like to see from D'Lo is just consistency. 
absolutely being that guy, taking care of the basketball, not taking as many chances with trying to make plays and just being efficient on the offensive end. You know, he's still averaging 17 and a half points, six and a half assists for this basketball team. 35 was a great night. I wouldn't expect that from him very often. But if he can give you that 17 and six every night with a LeBron and 80 led team, you got a good third piece. I agree. I agree. I don't think there has to be necessarily a third person here. I think it's collective. Mm -hmm. What can they do? Can Austin Reeves put in 15? Can Christian Wood put in 15? Can they get Rui and Gabe Vincent back? So I think once they get their full bench back, they don't really need a third guy. Let LeBron continue to play how he's playing. Let Anthony Davis be the best player on the team. And then each night it could be someone different throwing in a 20 piece. Can we do a little art of the flop? I mean, it's always up for interpretation. Is it? Isn't it? There was a moment last night. What do we think? It's funny because it happened with Stewart too. You know, their beef from last Yes, <laughs> there was blood yeah, they got last little, time. They got little <laughs> you can't flop when you have beef with someone. But so then. It was definitely a flop. Did he get, <laughs> did, did he get <laughs> fined for this or, or a T? Oh, I don't know. I don't think so. Of course not. No, oh, it's a 21 point game. Like, what are you going to do? What are you doing? Yeah. That's, I, trying that's, to sell it. Trying that's to sell a flop. it. It's a flop. It's just a weird thing. But he doesn't do. flop. Remember he said that last year? No, he doesn't. Why would he? he? Um, look, the Pistons are 2 and 16. 15 straight losses. That is really tough. I, I know the expectations aren't high, but my goodness, what do you do with your mentality through all this? I, I don't think they expect it to be this Yeesh. this bad, obviously. I think when you hire Monty Williams, they gave him a massive contract, one of the richest contracts for a coach in NBA history. When you pay him that much money, this is not the type of star. 2-16, and 16, he lost 15 in a row. But at this point, all you can do is try and hope for growth day by day. And I think Monty Williams spoken about it. It's the, the, the habits day to day, the losing habits that have been building for the last several years in Detroit, breaking them, losing them is hard. Like, it's not easy. And then you, you add in Boyan Bogdanovich, Monte Morris. They have not played yet this yeah. season. And those are two veteran players that you're relying on. Monte Morris was supposed to start for this team, potentially. <laughs> Boyan Bogdanovich is a starter. He's a guy that can command a lot of value in the trade market. And Joe Harris, who they traded for from Brooklyn, he hasn't played that much this year as well, and he's out an extended period of time. I, I will say help does seem to be on the way. Boyan Bogdanovich, I'm told now, he's, he's been out with an injury the entire season. He is day-to-day. -day. He could be back in the lineup as soon as tonight in New oh. York, if not on Saturday at home against Cleveland. So I'm told he is uh, on the cusp of, of getting in the lineup, and then hopefully that – energizes this group but there's no doubt they gotta they gotta take some steps here as a franchise and and what I mean looking at their team like Cade Cunningham I think is a star who does he pass the ball to like there's no shooting there's no spacing I mean I like Jaden Ivey but I mean their, their their team doesn't even make sense they're they really need those Monty the Monty Morris Bogdanovich and Joe Harris at least that can provide yeah. some outside shooting to give Cade Cunningham more lanes right now they're just packing the paint and letting Killian Hayes get wide open shots so it's it's kind of a disaster and I almost feel bad for Cade Cunningham because he just has nothing around him well, he feels bad, too. He, he told us. He was very honest about it. We're bad. We're bad. That's it. There's nothing else to say. It's, it's hard in today's NBA when you're without three guys, yeah. three veteran players like this, and then you're asked to, to take the next step as a young team, and you don't have your veteran players. And so Detroit's <clears throat> in a tough spot. And also, again, Monty Williams, you don't pay Monty no. Williams to go, you know, like this team is supposed to take a step here this season, and you hope that they do, and we'll see. <laughs> They're not firing Monty Williams with that They're bag. Can't. Absolutely not. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if that's good or bad for him. It's great for him. <laughs> yeah, it's great for him. But all right, we got some Shams scoops time. Woohoo! Do, 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 do. Uh, the Warriors on Tuesday night, of course, that was that bizarre game where they were up so big, but they also had some injuries. So you've got updates? Two injuries. One is significant injury. Gary Payton, the second, he had a non contact calf injury. I'm told it's a torn right calf. Yeah. He's yeah. going to be out indefinitely. Significant time he's going to be missing. And this is a guy that's obviously been a key cog of this team. They traded for him uh, back last season from Portland. Uh, he's been integral for this team. Chris Paul, he has a nerve issue in his left leg. I'm told this is going to be more of a day-to-day -day injury. He is out tonight against the Clippers. We'll see exactly how long he'll be out. I mean, again, this is a guy that's, you know, late stages of his career, still playing at a, at a high, high level. But they're going to be c careful with this injury. He's going to report to the training staff, medical staff today, and they're going to evaluate him and see how he feels. That's a, uh, yeah, but, that's but, not but good they're, But they're eight and ten right. now. And so when you're thinking about it, injuries are settling in. I mean, I'm curious from Lou's perspective, how much trouble are they in? Like, are they, are they cooked? A torn calf is crazy. That sounds gross. <laughs> they get meal prep right now. I don't know if they cook, but they Magic City meal prep. Meal prep. They get they get prep. Look, this is a team that's they they're still a half game out of the 
the play-in spot. And when you guys are talking about the play-in, I like to think of that 9 and 10 spot as like a wild card. I don't know if they're a playoff team, but they got an opportunity to get in. So I'll call them a wild card from 9 to 10, not a playoff team. Because like if that. you wanted to be a playoff team, you play better throughout the course of the season. But, you know, this is a team that's a half game out of being in that 10 spot. And they also have the capabilities of running off seven to eight wins in a row. But it just feels weird with this group now. You know, the body language is off. The vibe is bad for a team who's kept a lot of um, adversity in the house. Uh, now, all of a sudden, we have storylines and we got distractions with this group. So it just feels funny. I don't know if they still have that glow, but they're they're capable, but I just don't feel it right now. Yeah, I think Cooked is a bit aggressive, but they're definitely showing signs of slowing down, which is scary as a, as a Warriors fan. And when, when teams when used to go to Golden State, they feared them. Like, right. I used to hate going to play them. You know they were cooking. You know they were moving. They were, they were moving without the ball. They were knocking down three. It's not like that this year. And, and as a player, you feel, you know, you kind of feel the decline. You don't want to accept it, but... They're not who they used to be, and, that, and that's a scary, scary, scary feeling. Just life, though, isn't it? Yeah, tell it's me about it. Cycle of life. Lou, you're cheating, because now you get to leave us for the rest of the day, and I don't think that's fair at all, but <laughs> for, here it is. For good reasons. Okay. Good luck today, Jada, and the Hebron Christian Academy Lions. I'll see y'all later. Okay, fine. Go. That's a good reason. All right, Lou, we'll see you next week. Uh, when we come back, Kenny Beecham joins the show. We'll talk some more hoops. Running Run back returns. The running back, running back. Run it up, run it back, yeah. Run it up, the running back, yeah, yeah. Run it up, run it back, run it up, run it back, run it up, run it back, run it up. Run it up, the running back, yeah. Run it up. All right, we now welcome one of the internet's top basketball minds, also great background, uh, co-host of Through the Wire podcast and the Kenny Beecham podcast, and one of FanDuel's newest partners. Kenny Beecham joins us now. Welcome to the family, uh, first and foremost. But we, we got to talk Chicago Bulls. I think all of us growing up, that was a, probably our favorite team, but it's yours, right. and they're 5-14. and 14. What do you do with this team? Blow it up? Yeah, I think that's the only way to go at this point. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, as, as a guy that has watched every single Bulls game for the last five years, this is the least amount of fun I've had. And we've had real tanking seasons in that five years. So oh. um, I think when you put together a roster that with the idea of competing and you're struggling to compete every single night, the writing is on the wall that something needs to change. Um, so I'm just I'm waiting for the Shams update that something yes. has changed. <laughs> just so we all are. Wait, can I ask one thing? Because when you're a fan of the team who's at some point going to have a fire sale, probably, do you also sort of speculate, like, where's Zach Levine going to go? Or do you just want it done and over with and have your new team in place? I am always on the trade machine. Okay. Always on the trade machine trying to figure out, does it make sense for this team? Does it make sense for us? I am prepared for whatever the trades are <laughs> to not be very beneficial to us. So if it does end up being beneficial, then it's a win-win. Uh, but I'm, I'm always looking around the league like, hold on, maybe he's unhappy. Ha unhappy. Maybe we can get that guy. I, I'm always here. We need something. We just need something. Kenny, as a Bulls guy, I played for Billy Donovan for four years. Do you think he's the right fit for this either rebuild or, or process that you guys are going through? Well, I remember when he left OKC, one of the main reasons was – because they were going towards a rebuild. So I don't know if that's his priority. Like, I, I think he wants to coach a competing team. Um, I enjoy Billy Donovan as a coach. Um, I mean, you can speak to it, but it, it seems like he is a guy that can get the team behind him. Obviously, he's had his, his points of contention with, like, Zach Levine. But for the most part, with the younger guys specifically, I feel like they enjoy playing for him. And if we're doing a rebuild, I'm assuming that we're getting young guys back. So he might be the fit, but I don't know if he'll want to be there. Yeah. And and this this in-season tournament obviously you know there's multiple different opinions on it the other night the celtics they went to hack a drum and uh yeah. obviously that could be the new norm now with the point differential what's your take on that do you think there should be any changes to that tournament uh do you like it do you hate it i loved it um if there's one thing I would change, I would maybe open the pool to like 10 teams just mm -hmm. so we can have another knockout game because I love like win or go home scenarios. We see that with the the uh, offseason or the postseason tournament where like, man, this one game means we can make it or we go into the offseason. Right. So I would extend that. Um, I like the idea of teams playing hard for 82 minutes, even if that means they're up by 30 points because of the point differential. And I know there's a lot of conversation about the unspoken rule as someone that's never really played professional basketball. I, I don't really look at it like that. So when they went hack a drumming, I'm like, well, drumming, let's let's make some free throws, baby. You know, that that's what my head was at instead of being mad at Joe Mazzula.
That's the thing. The civilians like us, we like the point differential because we're like merciless and you guys actually have respect for your opponents. I think that's what I've noticed now. <laughs> See, I said the other day, though, when the Warriors were playing the Kings, they were so worried about this 12 point differential yeah. that they played fast and they lost. They, they just they lost, lost the game instead of trying, you know what I mean? So it's you got to be careful. <laughs> I gotta love it. Kenny, so you say, you say you've been messing around on the trade machine. So I want to mm. know what 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 trade would you make? Well, what, what's on the higher, you know, hierarchy of your trade request list? Well, that's, a, that's the thing, Shams. I, I think that because I'm a Bulls fan, I'm a bit biased towards my Bulls. So because of that, I may value Zach Levine a little bit higher than maybe consensus. So I'm not looking at a trade that's like, oh, we're going to get a Rudy Gobert type trade package, a Kevin Durant trade package, because that's not what the value of Zach Levine is. At this point, I just think the locker room needs to be shaken up. So if that means we get a couple young role players and maybe a protect the first round pick, I'm not going to love it. But I'll be okay with it because everybody's walking around with their head down. I'm not seeing high fives. Like Steve Nash gave out a lot of high fives in his time. I'm not seeing a lot of those here in Chicago. Um, so I just I just want something to change, Shams. And I think the city will be happier when it happens. So speaking of the Bulls again, who's on your Mount Rushmore? Yes. All time Bulls history. Obviously, uh -huh. we know about Jordan, we know about Pippen, we know about D. Rose. Yeah. What's your Mount MJ, Rushmore? MJ, 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 MJ. So, so there is a, I think, a official Mount Rushmore Chicago Bulls fan, but I have my own personal one. Of course, we're going to have MJ, Scotty, Derrick Rose, and I have Jamal Crawford there because mm. my first memory as an NBA fan or as a, as a kid is watching Jamal Crawford go against Allen Iverson in a game in April. And I think Jamal had 30, AI had 40. And here in Chicago, if you, at that time, if you didn't have cable, the only thing you could watch is Bulls basketball. And that two-year span when he was in Chicago – I was watching nightly, and at that point, I had to be like eight years old. So he helped me fall in love with the game. So even though his time in Chicago was just a few years, it mattered a bunch to me. Oh, I love the Shams, who's Crawford. yours? Maybe yeah, she, right? I got to have Joe Keem Noah at the five in there, right? That's I love your that. friend. Give me him, Robin, Pippen, MJ, yeah, he's got Rose. Him, him, yeah, I mean, he's, uh, Joe Keem's got to be your son. He's got to uh, be. Uh, what I'm about not Will do you, my do? Do you, How Kenny, do you, do you retire? Do you retire D Rose, Joakim, Luol Deng? Like, do you retire Cartwright? those guys? Without actually getting the jewelry, I think it's a little bit tougher. Hmm. I mean, Chicago has been pretty stingy with retiring jerseys historically. <laughs> if it was up to me, I would, because that era was the best I got to see as a Bulls fan. Born in '96, I didn't really get to experience the second three peat. Um, so that the couple years we were the one seed and we thought we had a chance against Miami, like that was really, really fun years for me. And to see like the one year where D Rose was out and Joe Kim Noah stepped up, ends up fourth in MVP voting. He has my heart, you know, as a Bulls fan, but I don't know if it really makes sense long term. Um, Kenny, I'm about to ask a question I can honestly say I've never asked anyone in my entire <laughs> life. OK, why do you have Chris Paul as one of your favorite players of all time? So, okay, so, <laughs> so growing up, like everybody, I hoop dreams, you know. Um, uh, mom's is like 5'2", Pops is a 5'10". So I'm like, I know I'm not going to get really tall. And I saw Chris Paul as a guy that was bordering six foot, dominating the game. I'm like, this is the guy that I want to play like. I, I wasn't in the gym enough to, to have the handle or the vision or the leadership um, so I was like, okay, I'm going to take a step back as trying to play ball, but just admire ball. And Chris Paul was the guy. Like, wow. like when he was in uh, with, with the Hornets, like that was prime fandom for me growing up. And I watched, obviously didn't have cable, so watch all the highlights I could. And to this day, a bunch of years later, I still can't get away from it. Watching him hmm. is still hmm. fun for me, at least. That's I, Okay, so Lemma, I have a theory. Like, there are some players across all of sports that are just, they have some sort of a jinx or a curse, and, the, and they're never going to get a ring. I have, I've mm -hmm. always had Chris Paul in that category for myself. Do you yeah. think he's going to get one before he's he done? He ain't getting it this year. Well, he's not getting it this year. No. And, and you know what? Going into the season, I thought there was a possibility. They started off pretty hot. Yeah. The first time in Steph Curry's career where they have a positive point differential when he sat, a lot of that was Chris Paul running with the second unit. I'm like, this could be the year. But these last two weeks, these last two to three weeks, it's like it's not happening. And now, again, th historically, he struggled with injury these later parts of his career. We're seeing that pop up again. I don't think it's going to happen, unfortunately. But everyone doesn't get a ring. Nope. You can still be great without that jewelry, in my opinion. Kenny, what's your take on the feud between, right now, Chris Paul and <laughs> Scott Foster, which we've seen again flare up over the next week? 
I, I think it's I think it's comedy, honestly. Like I I can't help but to tune into those games if I know that. Like this is the only time that I care about who's officiating the basketball game. You know, for better or for worse. You know, we're here for the basketball players. But if we see Foster there and Chris Paul there, we know something is going to happen. It's going to be an ejection. It's going to be an argument. It's going to be a Chris Paul loss historically. It, it's fun, but I understand the frustrations from everybody that's actually rooting for the team that Chris Paul is on. Um, to, to see him get ejected for, for some words, it's not great. <laughs> but again, the, the NBA is also like a drama and that's part of it. I know. It's like it's like wrestling when those two are. <laughs> I never thought about that. It could be the Warriors Pistons yeah. on a Wednesday if Scott Foster's ref and I'm, I'm tuning in because I want to yeah. see the fireworks. Like I know everyone's yeah. like he shouldn't ref CP games, but it, you just said it. Like it's kind of this added bonus. Um, and then you got Draymond Green in all of it. So there's more drama to talk about. He finally gets back from the five game suspension and then turns around the fourth quarter and gets a technical. Um, I there's. There are so many differing opinions on Draymond and that team, but for you, for your money, for your opinion, is he too much of a distraction? It's, it's easier to say that now than previous years, right? You, you were willing to put up with Draymond's antics because at the end of the day, when Draymond, Steph, and Clay played together, they were virtually unstoppable. Now that we're seeing them slow down collectively, everybody except for Steph, Steph is doing his thing. Um, see the rest of them slow down. You're like, are the antics really, really worth it at the end of the day? And part of the reason why Draymond Green was worth it because of, it was because of the defense, right? The defense was old world. And so far this season, we haven't seen that version of Dre. So it's like, this is a team that can't afford to not be one of the top six teams. The last time they were a playing team back in 2020, 2021 season, they had the one game to win and they lost both and they were on the outside looking in. Now they followed that up with an NBA championship, but this version of this team is not the same as then. So, so Draymond Green, it, it's hard to tell a player after 10 years of antics that he has to tone it back a little bit, but it is time that we get more just production on court and not the other stuff. The tech that led to what a, a 13 to six runs and then a, a, a game winner, it hasn't been great. No. Yeah, Kenny, last week I saw something I've never seen before in that, oh, in that Spurs Clippers <laughs> game where this man Pop grabs the mic. This pop, man Pop? Like it's a high school <laughs> basketball game and tells the, the crowd to stop booing Kawhi Leonard. Yeah. Do you think he, he should be, he can do that? Do you agree with it? Do you think booing's do part of the game? Because I think it's bogus. <laughs> I, I agree with the idea that if I am a paying customer, I should be able to boo. Mm -hmm. Like, I think that's the that's the maximum, right? We're not calling Kawhi out of his name. We're not doing anything extra. But booing is just a part of sports in general. It could have been anybody at that line. This is the opposing team. I'm rooting for the Spurs. I'm going to boo. It was, it was different, right? There's nobody in the game, as far as coaching goes, that I respect more than Greg Popovich. But this was just one I was like, the few times in Popovich's career that I say I don't agree with him. Like, yeah, let, let the fans that pay the money do what they can do. Come to think about it, when I played in Memphis, my home crowd booed me, and my own well, coach didn't even tell him to stop. Can I? Can I? <laughs> you should have. Yeah, from they that probably should have booed me, but what? Chandler, my own you're coach. You're not likable. You know Do what? you not get that? Fizzdale, Jimmy Bickerstaff, I'm off you. Fizzdale, <laughs> I'm off them. They could have had my. Jimmy should have grabbed the mic. Yeah. You kidding me? My home crowd booing me? Maybe they agreed with the crowd. Oh, wow. Yeah, thanks. That's where's that yeah. been? We need that more. Another home uh, crowd. Uh, I, I kind of love I that. Can't dodge it. Pop. So, so, Kenny, you've talked about surprising small market teams. We've seen the rise of the Thunder this year. What do you think their ceiling is, uh, you know, this season? It's um, hmm. pretty, pretty high. It's higher than I anticipated going into it. I think that I was a, a bit of a skeptic when it came to Chet Holmgren, not because of him himself, but just for the fact that he is a first-year player, right? It's, it's rare that we see a first-year player, especially at the center position, be as impactful as he has, where if you look at, like, I'm also kind of like a numbers nerd for the people. I, I don't know if everybody agrees with that. But you look at like EPM, he's like six in the entire league behind people like Shea, behind people like Jokic and Embiid and, and some of the best players in basketball that he's been able to hold it down. And it's 2.2 blocks per game doesn't Ooh. tell the full story of his defensive versatility. So I think that adding a guy like him, we finally get spacing for Shea Gears Alexander, something that he's been able to average 30 points per game without it. Like it's really, really high. Obviously they got a cloud over the organization at the moment, but if they settle that out, um, I think this this really is a team that other teams that are used to being in that situation are not going to be looking forward to playing in the playoffs. Kenny, I got to say, man, I'm impressed. I love the way you, you dissect things. That was 
Really well done. So now I want your Appreciate opinion it. on the Kings, man. They're 10 and 7. They're 8 and 4 when Darren Fox plays. Uh, I didn't have on my top five point guard list. Mm -hmm. Lou did. Right, who's your top five point guards in the NBA right now? And the reason I didn't is Ooh. because I counted Luca as a point guard. Yep. As you should, as you should. You're putting me on the spot here. Um, I think Steph Curry is still the best point guard in basketball. Yep. I, would, I guess I would put Luca too. Right. Um, if, if we're counting Shea Gilgis Alexander, right. I think that You're he has to be in this right conversation here. One, two, three. <laughs> After that, I think it gets a little bit more difficult. It gets a little bit more difficult. Like Damian Lillard historically deserves to be in the spot, and he's starting to put it together. So I, I may put him at four just out of respect. Uh, Halliburton. And after that, I think I went, oh, I think I went Tyrese. Halliburton. I think I went Too Max. many. I think I threw in Max. I think I panicked and put Max. At and Kenny, five. in yeah. fairness, yeah. our top five lists are usually seven long. So if you wanna, if you wanna go ahead and choose yeah. as well. <laughs> I, I always say, I always say the realm of top five instead of giving a real top five. John Rant, you know, he's always playing. Forgot about him. Stop. Yeah. You can't reward. I, him I would say something right like. De'Aaron Fox is a top five-ish point guard in yeah. basketball. And there's, leave it at Ky that. there's Kyrie, there's Jalen Brunson, there's yeah, Tyrese. Kyrie. There's so yep. many Brunson. now, it's crazy. Yeah. Trey Young. The game's in a good spot. Now, see, now we're back at the top ten again. Uh, Timberwolves, 13-4. and four. <laughs> One of those teams that's starting off the season hot, been fun to watch. But are you buying it? Are they for real? I feel vindicated because I am a guy that has always said that Rudy Gobert is the best defensive player in basketball. Okay. And and when he got traded to Minnesota, I was like, I didn't love the trade because it was a lot of capital. It was a lot of good players. But I was like, this is a team that was like 22nd in defense last year. They were towards the bottom of the league in the fits of rebounding where Rudy Gobert does that. And last year, it was a disappointment. McCarthy Towns was out for the offseason, then got injured in November. And they, they struggled. Like, they ended up making a playoff spot. But for the most part, when you pay that much draft capital, you pay all of that, that's not what your ceiling is. And now we're seeing that Rudy Gobert was injured last season. He was trying to adjust, and they're rolling. Do I buy it as a like a real team that yeah. I'm fearing in the playoffs? So we still have to see that. But if there was any team last year that played the Denver Nuggets well, it was them in the first round. I, I, nice. Like, they have the pieces to maybe slow down that with the double big lineup. I'm going to say because Anthony Edwards is such a stud and Carl Anthony Towns is looking like a good version of himself again, I'm going to give them the – benefit of the doubt, hmm. but there are a few teams that I might put above them come playoff time. Kenny, an, an, another team I think taking the next step, the Orlando Magic. Eight wins yeah. in a row. Um, are they for real? Are you buying them as a home court advantage type of team? No, I, I'm not putting them in the home court advantage, but I'm buying them as a genuine playoff team. I, I think that the way Jamal Mosley had them guys playing, um, they have finally a, a identity. I think that when you have a rebuilding team, that's one of the hardest things to figure out who are we as a collective, and they're hanging their hat on the defensive side of the ball. And if you look at the last six or seven games, they're doing this win streak. Paolo is looking a lot better. Franz is looking a lot better. And they have the glue guys like Jalen Suggs who can give you a highlight throwing a lob to another point. Like, it's a fun team to watch, but they still do have things that they struggle with, like half-court offense. And if we're talking about the playoffs, half-court offense is extremely important. So I am enjoying that the Orlando Magic have finally turned the corner but I'm not seeing them as a top four seed in the Eastern Conference. The early season fun stories so far. Oh, okay, negative for a second. There are some bad teams. We've talked about yeah. one already this morning. Uh, who's the most unwatchable this season? It, ha it has to be Detroit. Oh, man, that hurts. It has to be Detroit. <laughs> I know. I, I sat down and watched um, the Tank Bowl is what a lot of people are calling it, the Wizards versus the Pistons. <laughs> watched the entire thing. No cuts, no distractions. Why? I'm like, I need to really figure out what's going on in Detroit. It's not pretty. It, it, it's Kay Cunningham trying to create for himself and others, but the people that he's creating for don't, they're not real threats. Or like even the guys that we consider positive three-point shooters now, like Isaiah Stewart, the other teams are not respecting because if he beats us, then that's okay. Well, I like watching the Star Thompson play. He, he's a fun story. But for the most part, you got a guy like Monty Williams coming in to change the identity. This is not the direction they thought they were going to go in. They have one above 500 seasons since 2008, mm. since, since Obama. Oh was in office. That's like, think about that. A lifetime ago. God, so uh, like... it's, a, it's a team that has been looking for change, and they thought that they found it, and they haven't. Well, you know, I'm kind of glad you mentioned Washington in there. The Jordan Poole experience mm. for you has been what? It's been amazing. It's been amazing. <laughs> and not in a traditional sense, not in a Steph Curry, LeBron James sense. Amazing. Like, you don't know what you're going to get mm -hmm. any, any day of the week. Is he going to watch his coach draw play in the huddle? Is he not? 
Is he going to blow kisses to the audience when they're down by 26? <laughs> is he throwing it off the backboard while down by 30? <laughs> like, so you funny. never really know. It's like the rot. It's just this crazy <laughs> ride that no one can predict. I kind of love it. Um, and for your money, the best league pass team is who? Best league pass team. So I don't want to pick one of the teams. I don't want to pick the Lakers or the Boston Celtics. They have a bunch of uh, games on yeah. national TV. Um, I might still have to go with Sacramento, honestly. Their brand of basketball, free-flowing, a bunch of passes. DeMontis Sabonis playing as, as the hub. Um, they were my number one league pass team last year. And I, I'm going to go two years in a row they're winning it. I like that one. That was a good one. I mean, if you don't pick the Spurs, obviously. Uh, Kenny, we are going to have you on throughout the rest of the season. We very much are looking forward to it. Thanks for the time this morning. So be good. Thank you, guys. Thank you. And we will be back with That Man Has a Family in a few. Run it up. Run it back. 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 Sean's like, that you're here for us. This is the fun highlight part where some people, you know, kind of look like fools. No. There you go. Boom. I love this kid, Shams. He, is he, he can play, stud. and he's so young. They drafted him in the mm, first round, oof. and he's already proven he can be a starting point guard. He, he's been one of the bright spots for Utah. This is yeah. a team that oh, wants to contend. Oh. That's Athletic. fun. In real time, that's yeah, uh, that's something. Ooh, you like to see your point guard do that. Yeah, that's so. that angle's good. I like it a lot. Uh, Joel, oh yes, two you monsters. Boo. Nah. What? Nah. That's a nice block. I mean, mean I, I, I know you have to go a little up and under action yeah. there, you know. He's like coming down. I like, like, meet me at the rim. There's two centers. Why is the block happening below the net? I, look, you can only deal with what you're given. And he was given that. It's good defense. And he swatted it it's good to defense. the stands. I don't know what else you want. I'd like him to kick it to D'Lo over there. All right, we got two more big look ones. Possible rookie of the year versus defensive. Oh. oh. See, this let's is gonna. Give, let's give Rudy Gobert some flowers. Yeah, so he's playing well. Shout out Eddie Gonzalez. Rudy Gobert to the moon. Shout out Eddie Gonzalez. <laughs> That's right. You know what? This is gonna happen to Chet a lot because he's light in the loafs. He's gonna get bullied down there. He's, this is gonna happen quite a bit. Are we gonna? We're just doing light in the loafs now. You don't like that? I don't know if we're gonna let that one stick. Um, you know what? That court's not awful, by the way, for the record. Shengu. Alperin. Oh. Okay, yes, that's my favorite one so far. Kyrie, shit, you, you played with LeBron, who, <laughs> who patented <laughs> this that. block. Shame <laughs> on you. Yeah, but this is, this is pretty awesome. Look at that, that What is can he do? That is pretty by Sangoon. I, 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 didn't, I didn't know he had this. Mm -mm. He's, He's got it all. He's got it all, Sean. Alperin. Alperin Shengoon. <laughs> Scotty Barnes. Oh. Beep, beep, beep. Look at you to uh, look That's at you to try to take the charge right here. Shout Do out not Yuda. say anything about you. Look at Skirt. We have learned Skirt. our lessons. <laughs> oh, the right, right foot, dude. <laughs> See, the, I I think the Euro step makes it even better. Yeah. And then the fact that he's he's so lengthy. He, these guys barely get off the ground and dunk. Yeah, the dunk alone doesn't do it for me. The, the, Euro, the Euro. Yeah, off I agree. Side off step. foot. Also, dunking off your right foot is just. It's harder. It's more yeah, impressive. I've always thought so. Mm. Kawhi Leonard! Spur great. Boo! Oh. Who is that, JaVel? Oh. Yeah, let's see what we can do. I like, see, I like this, because the fact that he's he's still doing this. He's back. Of course he's still doing he it. He is back. And when you boo him, he does it more. So technically, he should be happy that he's getting booed. Is it back-to-back 30-point games for Kawhi? Yeah. Stay hot. Look at him blow right by Lyles. Look, I've I've moved on. My, my anger has subsided, but I can't speak for everyone else. They're mad at him. Of course we're mad at him. Yeah. Come on. It was an ugly leave, though. You know, there are breakups and there are ugly ones. You buying that? It's time. Um, while on Gilbert Arenas' podcast, Rashad McCant said that, quote, real hoopers know that Kevin Durant is going to go down as a better basketball player <laughs> than LeBron. No. You buying that? No, he's not. I, I understand what he's saying. What's Kevin he Durant saying? is like a Rucker Park, smooth, silky hooper. Like he is a absolute. Yeah, like it's pretty. Yeah. It's smooth. He offensively, he's got a deeper bag than LeBron. Hmm. But no, the, 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 you've never once heard the debate who's the greatest of all time, LeBron or KD. It's LeBron or Jordan. I love Kevin Durant. I think he's an unbelievable talent at his size. What he does, being seven foot tall and plays the way he plays, is unheard of. But. No, LeBron. A better basketball player. No, LeBron's, no. LeBron is a better basketball player. But I, as a hooper, I get it. I would rather watch Kevin Durant okay, play there basketball. Okay, there you go. I think it's, it's, it's sexier to see him do his thing than like LeBron bully through guys. 
It's a sexier, it's a sexier watch. All right, maybe he should say it that <laughs> that way next time. Although that would be weird. Yeah. Uh, Paul Pierce. It's always Paul Pierce. It's it's like the same group of dudes that keep giving us these quotes. These but <laughs> here it is. Best American player in the league is Jason Tatum. Said I'm just looking around. I think he's past Kevin Durant. I think he's past LeBron. The only argument left is Steph. I don't disagree. Also, Joel Embiid now is on Team USA, so if he's if he's full American, I'm he's the best player in the NBA. He's just MVP. We well, have to say American-born, maybe. Mm, well, he's on Team USA. He's, uh, I don't you, know. I, listen, it's not a really a, a Tatum is up there. He's a top five. He's top five. You can't just change where you're born. It's Steph. <laughs> it's Joel, because he is an American <laughs> Team USA player. And then it's probably Tatum. I think Tatum is now currently a better basketball player than KD and LeBron. Hold Ooh. up. Wait, hold up. So he's up. buying Paul Pierce. Buying no, him. because I think I still am taking Steph or Joel over him. Okay, the Joel of it all. I'm... <laughs> He's on Team USA. He's an American okay, basketball player. Okay, but I wasn't born in this country, so I can't say I'm an American-born person. You are. You're American. Okay, I'm, I, I'm technically an American <laughs> now, but I'm not born here. All right, all right, what do you, you think Tatum is better than Steph Curry, LeBron, and No, Katie? I think I like Steph Curry the most of all. Right, all. <laughs> so you <laughs> figured it out. All right, guess what? Who Guess who the next guy is that said something? Uh, Kevin Garnett. I uh, <laughs> had this to say about Anthony Davis. AD looks... 40 years old. When I watch Anthony Davis play, he looks like me. <laughs> Chandler, are you buying He's that? putting up 40 and What's 20. Yeah, he, he like, I mean, I understand, again, where he's coming from. He he's always leaves you wanting more. He's always on the ground, right? You don't know, like, when he goes down, is it his torn Achilles or did he just get poked <laughs> in the eye? You have no idea. So he kind of moves like that, like he's a bit older. But I, I no, I'm not buying it. He's still a, a elite on. player in the NBA. He still can dominate a game. He is literally the best player on the Lakers right now. Nah, these guys are drunk. I, you know what they're doing? They're reaching that age where you look at other people and you think you deluded yourself into thinking they look the same as you. And, and you can just say whatever you. You just don't care. Yeah. Like you just, well, that also that. Yeah, you just. <laughs> That no. She looks just like my age. No, she doesn't. Um, we're taking a quick break here. When we come back, we got to talk a little Kyrie. What did he do now when Run It Back returns? Run it back. Run it up. Run it back. Run it up. Run it back. Run it up. All right, there's a play here between Kyrie and uh, Dylan Brooks. I want to show you right now. I just, I already know this is going to be great because of the two names we just said. Um, but here it is. I want your thoughts. You know what? I saw this play and I was like, oh, that review, they're gonna win. They reviewed this play and lost. If you watch Dylan Brooks' right hand, he gives him a little tug right there. Uh, I think he sells it. He does sell it. But well, hold on, let me. They reviewed the play. It's a barely, he barely like goes like this. Yeah, but no his actual... momentum's going this way. I think he gives a little, a little tug right here. It, Look. It can get you off balance. And it gets him know? off balance. I think I look, I'm he, always off balance. It looks like he got punched in the face, but it's a foul. It's a foul. It's, a, it's and definitely this one, you know, a foul. This was his, he fouled out because of this call. Dang. And they reviewed Dang. it. Dang. And he is not American, he's Canadian. Yeah, Canadian born and he, Canadian. He's not on the right <laughs> team. <laughs> We're going to have a fight about this for the rest of the season. <laughs> Fabulous. All right, that's it for us. We will be back Monday, bright and early. Safe weekend to all. Run it back, run it up, run it back, run it up. Run it back, yeah, yeah. Run it up, run it back, 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 run it.